Hey guys, in this video I just wanted to take a quick break from actual uh, syllabus content and discuss how I personally got an A star in IGCC Biology. And uh, here's the steps that I followed and I've used these steps not only to study IGCC Biology but all sciences for that matter and I've achieved a really high grade for all of them so I know that it works. So uh, possibly if you were to implement uh, these tactics into your own study plan then you will be able to get um, an A star and A plus grade too. So first of all, at the time the syllabus was my bible and metaphorically speaking I'm just saying that it's that important, okay? It tells you what you need to study and what you don't need to study. And so you should always be using the syllabus as a guide or a reference point when you are revising for your exams. Second of all, I understood the concepts first. Um, so people make the mistake of trying to memorize stuff before they even understand it. Now that's not good. You should always try to understand it first and then memorization becomes much, much more easier. So of course, understand the concepts and you can um, do so by perhaps just reading the textbook. And if sometimes you don't get what the textbook is saying, you can always go uh, watch YouTube videos or perhaps just uh, Google search it and see what comes up. Uh, whatever it takes for you to understand uh, the concepts before anything else. And thirdly, once you think you've understood that, it's time for memorization. Now I've um, emphasized the word majority here. So the reason I, uh, I emphasize that is because sometimes people make the mistake of kind of wanting to memorize every single little detail about everything. Okay. Now that's not important. That's, that's not possible. Okay, we can't memorize everything. We can't memorize 100%. And so, if you think that you are, you know, you've got memory gaps or, you know, you've got gaps of information, that's okay. Okay, so don't try to waste your time by kind of constantly fill in the gaps of your information that is missing in your brain. Because sometimes you study something and then you might take a nap, wake up the next day, and then it's gone already, okay? And things like that do happen, so that's okay. That's why I'm saying, if you think you've got the majority covered, then you're fine, you're good to go, okay? Now you can use your, more, your time more wisely after this by doing past papers, which is the most crucial, most important step of getting an A-plus grade in Cambridge papers, okay, or exams. Now, it's important for you to understand how to use past papers as well. It's not just about kind of uh, solving, you know, a couple of those, um, a couple of questions from different past papers and think you're done. You're not, okay? It takes, this is where everything kind of comes in and this is where your understanding and your memorized topics, everything just comes together and forms a really solid bulk in your brain. And this is why you need to do past papers. Not some of it, all of it as well. So here we go. Um, how I use past papers is first of all, before the exam, I left four weeks, okay, just to do past papers. Um, and it, it helps even more if you've been doing past papers throughout the year, but if you haven't, that's okay. Um, but anyways, I, I gave it four weeks, okay, just to concentrate on doing past papers. Um, I've physically printed every single past paper that I could find. Um, and the reason why I did this is because writing um, on the actual sheet is so much more helpful than kind of like looking at the questions on the screen and um, you know writing it down on refill and etc. It's just um, it just get when you when you do it on the actual exam sheet it just feels much better because it kind of replicates what it will be like in your actual exam and you know um, and of course you reduce the likelihood of kind of like losing your refill pad if you were to do it on the screen kind of thing so I suggest printing it physically because it's definitely more helpful. Um, and for every single past paper I did, I treated it like an actual exam, but with tighter time constraints. And that's just to kind of prepare yourself um, for for your exam, you know? So if you kind of train yourself to do an hour exam in an hour, if you somehow mess up with the time, then you might end up not finishing your exam on time. So you should train yourself to complete your exam at least 10 to 15 minutes earlier, just in case something comes up and you 
you know you, you stuff up you stuff up on one question or something that you don't lose too much time and even if you do you'll kind of still finish on time okay rather than have like two questions left in the exam and not be able to attempt it because of you know uh, because of time constraints so yeah train yourself to do uh, to do the exam faster so for example I would try to get an hour long uh, exam done within 45 minutes okay now also for every paper I would mark it comprehensively okay after finishing it so what I mean by that is for the parts that I've lost marks in I would write down the correct answers and um, I do it in another colored pen just to make it stand out for example I do the exam in like green I mean sorry not green like blue and uh, the markings would be in red uh, for the parts that I didn't lose any marks um, but there are more than you know there are more possible answers that I could have written then I would also write that down as well um, and for the questions that I you know had to totally guess because I I couldn't even attempt it because I didn't know then um, I would write down uh, what the marking scheme, uh, marking scheme said uh, just to get a feel um, about what the type the type of answers they wanted and then I'd go and quickly revise that topic using my notes or textbooks or whatever okay and I would do this for every single past paper until I would finished the whole lot okay so I would kind of go from like 2002 to you know wh whatever recent paper there was and all the different variants and I'd do that for everything and um, I would hope to finish all the past papers within three weeks of the four weeks I've left for past papers so that I can use that last week just to go through um, the past papers I've done and um, by then you'll kind of know that if you have any remaining gaps in your knowledge um, you, you know what to focus on and yeah and that's how I would sp uh, spend my last week and I would do the exam and it would turn out good so um, in the end it really just comes down to discipline if you um, if you can't get yourself to solve these past papers and can't get yourself to put in a little work then definitely you're not going to get um, a 90% grade uh, because it does require effort and this is the type of effort that I'm saying and past papers really isn't too difficult to do it's much more fun and practical than sitting down and memorizing your textbook so I think it's a fun way to study and the most effective way to study for your uh, for your papers in Cambridge so by effectively this uh, effectively disciplining myself to make use of these past papers um, I've got a 90 plus for all my sciences uh, from IGCSE to AS to A2 um, and uh, across all the sciences and it was definitely hard work but worth it in the end thank you